All right, so I'm gonna put some color on this table base now. Um, I'm gonna use Watco Danish oil. I like this stuff for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, it's, it's, it's an oil, it's penetrating, it seals the wood, it goes on really easy. It's like water-like, so you can spray it, you can brush it. I'm gonna brush this stuff on in a cool red Solo cup um, to make Toby Keith proud. The only thing that I don't like about this stuff is this stupid top here. I'm just either dumb it, then I can't figure it out, or my hands aren't strong enough, so I just actually end up prying it off anyways and it goes back on. But apart from that, I think it's pretty awesome. Um, and application is nothing more than grab yourself a brush, spread it on. That's it. And then we'll let it dry. It actually dries pretty quick as well. And then I'm going to put uh, white paint over top and then we'll come back and lightly sand it. And what that does is kind of expose some of the brown underneath, and then it gives it a nice rustic feel to it. Okay, so the oil's all on. Uh, I'm gonna run to town and deliver some wood that I gotta ship out east, and we'll let this baby dry, and hopefully it's uh, dry enough by later today and I can put some white paint on it. So this stuff you can get on Amazon. I will put a link in the description down below. There are several colors that they make. This one was black walnut. Um, most of the time I'm using one of the colors of walnut, either black, dark, or medium. Uh, they do have a, um, a natural and a light or Okay, so like the Danish that. oil is all dry on this one, and I'm gonna go and spray um, white paint on it now. Uh, sometimes you can, if, this, if the stain that you've used leaks a little bit or, or isn't, um, or you know, it gets into the paint, you can put a coat of lacquer on right now and then put the paint on top and that stops some of the seepage. But I found with this Danish oil, Danish oil if you let it dry, uh, it works really well. So there's a number of ways of putting this on. You can use an air compressor and a sprayer. You can um, brush it on, or you can even spray paint it on. Uh, I, I wanna kind of show a number of ways that you can do it. And if you're in a small garage and you don't have a compressor or you don't have certain things, you certainly can spray it on with a spray paint can. This is uh, the Rust-Oleum two times the coverage stuff. I'm trying to get a really nice even coverage over it. I will put a description uh, and a link in the description down below so that you can pick this stuff up and use it for some of your projects. It's called uh, Satin Blossom White and I like it. Okay, so I've got two coats of uh, white paint on this table base, and now it's time to sand. I've got my Makita cordless orbital sand, random orbital sander. I've got 120 grit sandpaper on here. One of the nice things about this one is that you can actually set the speed. So there's a one, two, and a three. I'm gonna set it on the lower one to start off with and lightly start going over it, paying attention to the corners and the edges and things like that. And what I'm trying to do is sand down enough of the white paint that the brown stain that we put on earlier starts to show through so that it's got a bit of a, of a more of an antique or, or worn look. Okay, and here's the base with the table top on it. You can see I've distressed just enough that you can kind of see some of the brown showing through which also uh, kind of matches up with the top. Looks really cool, catches your eye. This top's got a nice satin finish. We used epoxy on it first and then we sanded the epoxy off. There's another video that shows how I pour the epoxy on all that and then sand off the gloss and then put a satin finish on top if you're interested in that. But that is how you distress paint and distress a base.